Hello guys, it's Teenage DC Fan, back with another video, and Windshot's back, baby, and he's got an evil doppelganger to deal with. Um, so, the trouble begins when a leather-jacketed brainy pulls a literal come-with-me-if-you-want-to-live on the wind double, um, who's newly arrived on Earth, and escorts him to Lex's limo, where the worst Luther makes bad wind a proposition. Hit the National City Toy Con and make Chester Dunholtz pay for what he did to Wynn's father. In case you don't recall, Dunholtz was Wynn's senior's boss and senior tried to force Wynn to kill Dunholtz at a previous Toy Con. F for real though, what, why do people still attend this Toy Con thing? I mean, people always showing up trying to kill other people. Like That would make me not want to go, but mm, people still go. Now, remember that Brainy's only working with Lex because his new logic-only personality says it's the smart play. Lena, too, is warily partnering with Lex, but only after he promises not to hurt anyone and offers her future access to Q-Wave technology. And we all know how much Lena Luther loves her Q-Waves. Now, to hold up her end of the, the partnership, Lena apologizes to Andrea for the situation with her mother's medallion, and tries to pump her for information about Leviathan. But on this Earth, Andrea hasn't been activated yet. So Lena pulls the you jump, I jump card and makes Andrea promise to call her if she hears from Leviathan. So yeah. And at ToyCon, which seems to be held in a parking garage basement and attended by a crowd of dozens, Carr and William arrive to cover the release of Lex's action figure, which, by the way, I would love to have. Um, but William has no chill and jumps right in, in with pointed questions about Russell's death. Lex pulls Carr aside and asks, Why did I just get Frost Nixon by a Boy Scout? And warns her that if she doesn't shut down the, the Lex pose, that he'll straight up murder Will William. Um, good likeness on the action figure, though. Like I said, would be cool to have. And in short order... Those dang symbol monkey bombs march onto the com onto the convention floor and detonate, forcing Supergirl to shield attendees from the blast. Then Badwin shows up to open fire at Dunholtz. And for some reason, Supergirl watches aghast as the bullet rockets toward Dunholtz. Instead of, y you know, speeding over to stop it, she's like, oh, look at the bullet. That dude's gonna be dead. But thankfully, that's when our win, Earth One win, enters the scene in his embiggening Legion ship, which deflects the bullet and saves Dunholt's life. Good thing, too, because Wynn is desperate to keep his doppelganger from killing anyone. As the time cops in the further, the future believe he's the murderer. And if Toyman Wynn commits any crimes, our win stands to lose his wife, um, Isla, and their daughter, Mary. And I, Isla, by the way, uh, in the comics is Lightning Lass, so it's a possibility that she is a part of the Legion as well, and she's Lightning Lass. And while Brainy skulks off to cover up the images of him lurking near Dunholtz on the security footage, the Danvers sisters are thrilled to reunite with their old friend. So they take him to John's, where they're greeted with a recently installed secret elevator, which whisks them away to... The Tower, which is a new superhero layer in, since the DEO isn't safe anymore. And it's basically like Star Labs or the Arrow Bunker, but for Supergirl and her super friends. Or, um, w when, when they mention the building where the Justice League or super friends uh, created as their headquarters at the end of Crisis, um, when mentions that in the future it's called the hall of justice so uh that's pretty cool um the hall of justice has just got name dropped so maybe at the, some point in the future they'll actually be called the justice league or something so i don't know but while they're there, Jean uses his powers to restore Wynn's memories of a time when Lex wasn't a hero, and Wynn adjusts pretty well, all things considered, plus it explains why they didn't take his legionship to the DEO, but instead sent it to a secret government black site. 
which, of course, Brainy tells Lex about. Lex bribes his way in and pulls out a memory cube that allows him to identify um, Gemma th through an old oil painting of her and Rama Khan. Having gotten what he was after, Lex tells Brainy he's on his own to stop Toyman. Then he gives the cube to Lena so she can access his Q-waves. Q Very efficient. But Badwin, a.k.a. Toy Man, um, has been busy and hacks all the airwaves, as supervillains uh, usually do. And he tells the people of Earth that he's out to avenge the harm done to his family and encourages them to like, subscribe, share, and follow me. You know, as supervillains totally do all the time. But even though I'm not a supervillain, you should totally do that down in the comments below. I mean, not, no, not in the comments, but just, just do it. I'm just, I'm just going to move on. Um, but when he reaches one million followers, he promises the most spectacular fireworks show they have ever seen. Nia, who's been extremely calm and reflective about her breakup with Brainy, arrives at the tower, which I, be I believe is a reference to the watchtower. But I don't get why, why Jean was like, I'm going to call it the tower. Like, it's not even like it's a tower, it's... I, I don't even know what it is. Um, but Nia's there to dream what she can about Toy Man's location. But she only dreams about Brainy turning into a white tiger. And her nickname for him was Wildcat. Um, so she, she thinks it means nothing. But she and Wynn step out onto the balcony, because of course the tower has balcony for discussing feelings. I mean, every every superhero base has to have something like that. They had one at the DEO. They got one at Star Labs. I don't know if there's one in the Arrow Bunker, but that doesn't really matter for much longer because, you know, Arrow ends in, like, two days. Actually, tomorrow. Um. So, yeah. Wynn gives her a... a a pep talk, and in the future, it turns out he's besties with Nia's great, 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 and a whole bunch of greats, uh, granddaughter, um, who, who, of course, is a descendant of Nia, and her name is Nura, um, and she is Dream Girl, and she's part of the Le the Legion, so she's like Wynn's best friend, basically. And it turns out she imbued Wynn's Legion Ring with her dream powers. So he assures Nia that she's a powerful woman in the future and gives her some of Nura's advice. Never let anyone make you question your own worth. And that's honestly some good advice that we can use in our own lives. Then Wynn and Kara have a heart-to-heart -heart about the joys of parenthood. He tells her that Car is a po popular name in the future because so many parents name their children after the heroic Kara Zor-El. And that, that truly made me melt a little bit, but Car is grappling with betraying her journalistic ethics or putting William in danger. And Wynn assures her, You're Supergirl. Being in your orbit, it's inspiring. Then they realize that Toy Man's probably seeking his own inspiration in the old toy company warehouse. There they find a newspaper clipping of Andrea and her father and realize Toy Man's going to target Andrea at National City University, home of the Tigers. Guess what? They're white tigers. So it turns out Nia's dream was actually useful, but she, she didn't figure that out. Um, so... That is also where William's supposed to be covering her launch of the VR platform, Obsidian Platinum. I mean, geez, the VR breakthrough didn't take long to engineer. I mean, just got the contact lenses thing. Now she's moving on to bigger and better stuff. But sure enough, Toy Man's there and wearing the tiger mascot costume. And he unleashes a streak of robot tigers on the crowd. And the... Soundtrack launches into Eye of the Tiger, which is an amazing song, and it fits really well with the scene. And Wynn impresses Nia with how he uses the dream powers while Brainy watches with concern in case she got hurt. Then both Wynn's co finally come face to face, and the good one encourages the bad one to create his own legacy, but bad Wynn racks up the million likes and detonates the bomb. 
our windshields himself with dream energy, while Supergirl, who was too slow to stop a bullet earlier in the episode, whisks multiple humans to safety before the university auditorium is destroyed. Luckily for Wind, they kept his evil double from committing murder, and the only person he killed was himself. And they also destroyed the ba- the future bounty um, that was on Wind's head. And then he even tries to convince Brainy to come with him to game night at Cars, but Brainy tearfully confesses what he's been up to, including unleashing Toy Man so Wind would arrive from the future and bring the ship and its memory cube with him. And he says... I'm terrified that I'm becoming the bad guy. And despite Wynn's forgiveness, Brainy stays behind to count all of his regrets, um, mostly breaking up with Nia. But they'll have a new face at game night after Kara convinces William, whom she's now calling Will, to team up with her to investigate Lex and to join her friend Hang. And Alex is... Alex notices one of the many long moments of eye contact Car and William share as they play Jenga and drink two old and new friends. Now, finally, at the government black site, a briefcase that's part of the Toy Man evidence pops up and plays a pixelated video of Bad Win. So maybe he's not gone as we all thought because th- this is a two-part episode thing, so yeah. Um, so, this is... Honestly, probably maybe the best episode of Supergirl I've ever seen. Well, actually, I don't know about that, but definitely the best of this season. Probably the best in the past couple seasons. Um, first of all, with the whole Kara and William thing, I don't like this. I want Kara to get back together with Monel, who is appearing in in one of the next couple episodes because the 100th episode of the series is coming up so Monel is hit, making his return but will he end up with Kara he better cuz I'm going to be mad if he doesn't uh cuz I want that to happen and you know William's cool but I don't want him to be with Kara in that way like People have been speculating about their relationship since her, his character was first revealed, and yeah, it's happening. But I just hope that it's not a permanent thing. Like, like I said, um, so let me know in the comments below who do you ship more, Kara and William, or Kara and Monel, and how do you think the whole Monel thing will turn out with that whole thing? Um, but also. The return of Win. Jeremy Jordan did an amazing job in this episode. Not pl- not only just playing Win, but also Toy Man. Um. Plus Toy Man, he, he was he did such a great job as Toy Man, because he was so insane and crazy and playful at the same time. Um. So I really like this adaptation of Toy Man, and I hope that he sticks around. And like I said, with Toy Man popping up again at the end of the episode, turns out he's kind of still alive, but he's just inside the computer. So maybe he's just going to be inside the technology and stuff. Um, but I have a feeling, and I, I don't know if they're actually going to do this, but I think it would be really cool if they did. Um, if you've seen, like, the Superman the Animated Series or Justice League Unlimited, if you've seen Toy Man on those shows, um, he's basically like a doll or a puppet. And I don't really know how to explain it. But I think it would be really cool if they used this Toy Man cliffhanger from the new episode and used it so that it's like he puts his consciousness inside of a puppet or a doll so then that's like it is in the cartoon. Because I really like that design from the cartoon. I, I like the way Toy Man looked there. And I think that would be really cool to see how they would do it like that in live action. Um, also, uh, with Toy Man, I hope that they don't kill him off. Because currently there's no Earth-1 Toy Man. Um, like, Wind's father was Toy Man, but he died. 
because he committed suicide. And Wynn is the toy man of the future, but he's a good guy in the future. I mean, we don't necessarily know that he's called toy man in the future um because we know that he's a superhero as a part of the legion because he has his own suit and everything but we don't necessarily know that he's called toy man but anyway i hope that they don't kill off this version of toy man um and keep this doppelganger of win on earth one like maybe locked up in the deo or in some kind of prison so then that way on the superman and lois show or maybe at some point in the future of supergirl again they could have him return as Toy Man. Because if you kill him off, then Toy Man's gone for good. I mean, like, yeah, you could introduce other characters like, oh, they're taking up the mantle of Toy Man, but it's just not the same. Plus, Jeremy Jordan is so great as Toy Man in this episode. Now, as for Wynn himself, it's so great to have Wynn back. Wynn has always been my favorite character on this show, and I was really sad to see him leave. I wish that he could stay on the show and become a series regular again instead of you know leaving after the next episode but ever since he left it i haven't really been enjoying supergirl as much as i used to like it it's always just been feeling like it's missing something and that thing that it's missing is win without him i i don't know but especially like all the scenes that he shares with like Kara and Jean and Alex and all those characters that were there since the beginning it just brings me back to the good old days you know the first couple seasons and the chemistry that they have together it he makes them better they make him better he makes the show better and i just wish he could stay on the show but unfortunately he can't um so I'm excited for the next episode, but we're going to have to wait um, three weeks for this, two or three weeks for this and Batwoman because, well, the Super Bowl is next Sunday. Um, So, I mean, if the Super Bowl's on, then nobody's going to be watching this show. Um, I mean, I know, I know I would probably be still be watching the Super Bowl if this was on, even if it was a new episode. I just record it um, and watch it later. Um, But yeah, so I really enjoyed this episode um, a lot. And I'm excited for the next episode. We have to wait a while. But it's worth the wait to have Wynn back. um, Even if it's just for a little bit. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What did you think about this episode and the return of Wynn and Toy Man? Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hope to see.